know, have gotten to know me over the years, have watched this channel, know that I love utilities. There's something so rewarding about driving a car built for a basic function as opposed to a sports car or a luxury car. And there's also this very particular feel about a very humble car with a bit of pretension. And what I'm driving right now certainly suits that uh, description. I'm in a 1958 Austin A35 van. Now, the Austin A30 was the first new car from Austin after World War II and it was designed to compete with the Morris Minor. And uh, things were tough in the UK after World War II. Minimal transport was very necessary, but they also wanted to do it with a bit of dash and style. And of course, think of the US market, which demanded a measure of style. So you had a confection like this, Austin A30, later the year A35, with a big block engine. The, the, the cars, which came as two-door sedans, four-door sedans, and this van, such as the one I'm driving, were penned by the studio of Raymond Lowy. And uh, they gained the nickname in the UK of the teddy bear because of the very friendly face that the uh, front grille made. And they seem like a shrunken version of a very swoopy, luxurious, late 1930s or 1940s uh, luxury car. They do have a certain cartoonish aspect about them, which also, frankly, brings a smile to your face. Um, but they are very, very practical and usable cars. In standard form, this put out 34 horsepower, which of course is not a lot, but again, for the period when this was introduced, it was certainly adequate. They boasted that with the A30, you could cruise at 50 miles per hour, which uh, certainly must have been an interesting uh, thing to do. Uh, but for the US market, a little bit more was demanded in terms of performance, and so the A35 came along with a 998cc uh, inline four engine, uh, again, very, very capable, and uh, much like the spec of the other uh, European imports with which it competed. And indeed, in the early days with the A30, it actually sold fairly favorably compared to the Volkswagen Beetle. Uh, but then again, there was also probably a good deal of anti-German sentiment still around, so it was fairly tough to sell Beetles in the uh, early 50s. It got a lot easier in the later 50s. And uh, by the time we get to 1958, this really is something that doesn't really suit the American market. They sold hundreds of thousands of these cars, though, uh, certainly in the UK, uh, and a number of them in the US as well. Now, one of the things, of course, that is also so interesting about these cars, which is very typical of small English cars, is the fact that these are very popular in motorsport. They're very tunable, and you can see both period film and go to uh, the Goodwood uh, racing meetings and see these hysterical races with A35 saloons practically uh, on their door handles uh, flying around the track. And uh, some of the greatest British saloon car aces cut their teeth in A35s. And this example uh, is rather different than a standard A35. It's got the uh, 998cc engine, but it's got dual SU carburetors, so uh, don't know what it's putting out, but it's certainly healthier than the basic single carb 34 horsepower version. It's very eager on the throttle. It's got a very short clutch travel, so the power is there immediately. And uh, it's also got disc brakes in place of the standard drums, coilover uh, shocks, and rack and pinion steering. 
Uh, now all this seems to be slight overkill uh, in this, but it does make it a more interesting and satisfying drive. The first thing that you notice that if I was driving a standard Austin A35, I'd probably be doing lots of this in the steering wheel. There's none of that here. The steering is absolutely tight and precise, which is something that the person that bought this new would not have experienced. And uh, the, the one thing that really gives away its origins is the fact that there are a lot of squeaks in this car. And uh, you really can't uh, do much about that. Although the interior has had quite a bit of a makeover uh, with uh, very fancy headliner and carpeting in the back, which this van certainly would not have had. Um, you know, sort of the, uh, the local grocery man or the plumber using this would have had a much more Spartan experience inside than the one I'm enjoying right now. But, you know, <laughs> there's just something about little cars of this period that just make you grin. It's like driving a, a, an Austin Healey Sprite. They're silly, they have no suspension, they have very little power, but you just grin from ear to ear as you drive it. And uh, this has much that same effect, um, albeit in a uh, very different form. You've also got plenty of headroom. Uh, it's reasonably uh, commodious. It's a narrow car, so it's got a big steering wheel. So when you're holding your hands at the proper uh, nine and three position, my elbow is hitting the door panel. Uh, but that's probably also, it's likely that the door panel, the original one, was slightly uh, thinner than the one that's in the car right now. So perhaps the original owner had more room. Uh, plus it's got the addition of a terrific Smith's uh, oil pressure and uh, water temperature gauge. Very, very useful in a car like this. It is the kind of car that just makes people want to stop and wave. It is just so friendly. These narrow roads also seem much more commodious when you're driving a car like the A35. You know, made for those sort of lane and a half English country hedgerow lined roads. It also has a great look riding on these Panasport uh, wheels. And you know, Panasports are the kind of thing that make any, certainly English car, but any car of this period, just look the business as they say in the UK. It's uh, also slightly lowered. So you get a much better feel for the road than you would have in a typically tippy uh, A35. And it's interesting to, uh, to note that the uh, big sister of this car, the Austin Atlantic, which is specifically designed for the American market, uh, you know, they tried really hard. And it was really something because there were no cars like this on the American market by American manufacturers. And this is a car that compared to the Volkswagen Beetle is a much more comfortable car. And uh, so therefore sort of deserved a much better reception than it received. But I think that perhaps the fact they tried so hard in terms of the design to be American might have actually worked against this car. Had it been more quintessential British, uh, then the things that it gave away to US cars might not be so noticeable. But, you know, all in all, it really is a very interesting experience uh, driving this car. And uh, as I've always said, the idea of sort of maximum impact for minimal outlay is, is something that, that I heartily endorse. And if you want to get noticed at the valet stand, especially in a nice summer day like this, I think this van would probably get you more attention than a McLaren. It is 
a utility with charm and spirit. And the kind of resto mod that really works. Just a bit tweaked to make it more enjoyable, but still very much retaining the spirit of the original. I think I'm an A35er.